I'm really honored to have such an August uh, panel and to be moderating it. Now, if I, if I turn to uh, you know, radio, uh, radio here, let me ask you, you know, what was it that you saw you know, that uh, caught your attention when it came to the sandbox? I must say it's been a little over a year now uh, when I first came to Hubli along with uh, Fanindra Sama, uh, who you will hear from. And uh, I mean, the energy excitement of this place is truly infectious. And uh, I was one of those who was, uh, I'll admit, infected by that bug of uh, sandbox, if you will. So I went back and thought about it and you know, spent quite a bit of time planning this. And it's uh, just about under three months, actually, since we launched uh, what's called a Kakatiya sandbox that's in a, headquartered in a town called Nizamabad, which is on the border of Maharashtra, Karnataka, and AP. There's only one place on the map where all these three states intersect. So that's where Nizamabad is. And uh, it's about 100 miles from Hyderabad. And, and I can't tell you how excited I am about it. Uh, I, as an entrepreneur, that's my background, as an entrepreneur in Silicon Valley, I spend a lot of time you know, in India, kind of straddle between the two places. Over the last 15 years, I've been coming here once every three months. And uh, so I like to think I'm somewhat familiar. I'm not a total novice when it comes to you know, some of the issues and opportunities in India. And uh, it truly is amazing. And uh, I, I knew there was some, I was also involved with a few sort of NGOs, uh, mostly in the US, and many of them focused on addressing problems in India, social issues. And uh, so I had a little bit of familiarity. And when I looked around, this certainly seemed like the most compelling way to address a lot of the social challenges here in India. And partly, perhaps, I'm biased as an entrepreneur and kind of a look at the way, because that's at the core of what you guys do here in Hubli. And you know, just this morning, I visited the Akshay Patra kitchen for the first time. I mean, it's amazing. I heard about Akshay Patra before. I saw some videos. I heard actually from Desh when he was out in a fundraiser in Silicon Valley uh, sometime in the last six to nine months. And you know, but nothing like going out there and seeing that. And I tell you, of course, India has built some world-class companies like Infosys and Redbus and others. But this is extraordinary. This truly is world-class. I mean, what Akshay Patra has done. And what Agastya, which is, by the way, one of the NGOs that we are uh, supporting uh, in Nizamabad, in the Kakatiya Sandbox. I mean, these are not just great examples of what can happen in India, but these are truly world class and a pride of India. So let's just give a big hand to these people and you know what they've done. So, so to me, you know, I, I can't think of any other better way to use my resources time or money or whatever other resources than to try and replicate Sandbox. And I'm sure, you know, much like here in Hubli, we'll have our share of new mistakes. And at the same time, I'm sure there are some things that we will do better than what Hubli has done, and we'll all learn from each other. So I'm very excited about this and looking forward to, you know, interacting with more, more of you uh, through the course of the day today and a little bit tomorrow. Thank you. So just following up on the, the Akshay Patra reference, uh, Again, I'd like to ask Sridhar, you know, give, we heard a little bit this morning from, you know, Mr. Mohandas Pai about some of the background to uh, Akshay uh, Patra and how it grew. From your personal perspective, what do you think, uh, you know, both in terms of just the scale as well as in replicating Akshay Patra, what are some of the challenges that you have seen? And how has, you know, I know right from the top on, you have a very core set of uh, management uh, in place that have got the business and the technical acumen. How has that helped and how has that helped you face those challenges? See, in Akshay Patra, some of the challenges which we have is predictable fund flow, number one. Second is, we are currently serving 1.3 million children every day. So, in an eight hour span, in 10,000 schools, 13 lakh children get fed in a, uh, a seven to eight hour window. So keeping the food fresh, food safe, and the last mile connectivity is a big challenge in Akshay Patra. This is number two. Number three is, though we are the world's largest school meal program from India in the NGO sector, in, in the school meal sector, still we are not known in many parts of our own country. Uh, let's take Mumbai may not know Akshay Patra so well. So we want to really improve our PR and uh, communications, though we keep doing it, but we want to really scale up in those areas. What has really helped Akshay Patra is compelling vision, the vision that no child in India 
will be deprived of education because of hunger. That really, you know, makes all of us come under one umbrella. That's number one. Second is, focus has really helped Akshay Patra. So the leadership has really worked on bringing in focus. So we don't do too many things. We just ensure that, we will ensure that no child in, in the country goes hungry to bed. So focus has brought a lot of strength to Akshay Patra. Third thing is simplicity. We do simple things. And I would like to thank Desh for uh, uh, making us simple. Okay. In fact, he has one thing which I've learned from the sandbox is even this morning, I, I felt that there's a lot of positivity in sandbox, a lot of positivity and a lot of energy and enthusiasm, which I feel is very much important for scaling up. And Akshay Patra, if you look at it, a lot of positivity. And I would like to make a special mention of missionaries like Agneshwar Prabhu, Raji Lochandas, who bring in the missionary spirit which is required for any organization. So we have a confluence of missionary spirit and professionalism in Akshay Patra. Typically, when you see an organization, let's take a startup, you may see a lot of missionary spirit, but may not have so much of processes and professionalism. Or you may come across an organization where there is professionalism, but not missionary spirit. Akshay Patra somehow has struck this equilibrium of missionary spirit and professionalism. And third thing which we have done, uh, thanks to the leadership of Akshay Patra, and thanks to people like Desh, we have really got the government to support us in a big way. So 60% of the revenue expenditure of Akshay Patra comes from the government. And 40% we raise. Of course, that's a huge number to raise, but still uh, we raise 40% uh, of the revenue expenditure. So this is a nutshell about Akshay Patra. That's great. Fine. So looking at the same kind of scalability, if you look at uh, uh, Augustia, uh, Tiago. I mean, Augustia also has gone on this ramp of growth over the last 10 years. It's now reaching a million plus uh, kids. Uh, you know, do you all have some fundamental principles like Sri Sridhar has that has helped you get there? Definitely. I think we have uh, stayed reasonably true to our mission of uh, sparking curiosity, nurturing creativity, instilling confidence in children, using science as a medium. We have been very innovative in the kind of products that we have put out, the services and the programming that we have done. Whole lot of it learnt here in the sandbox. The catalysis that we have had here in terms of catalyzing that spirit, the couple of speakers before me talked about the energy and excitement that you get out of working in a limited area experiment but very scalable because of what it provides to you. Uh, for instance, the kind of pilots that we have been able to carry out here and then scale it or replicate it elsewhere. It's not possible without the others, other items or the ecosystem that was available here. I could boldly go and do things like the lab in a box or lab on a bike here, which then have become much, much bigger and we've been able to take it to other places, even though you know vernacular differences, et cetera, might exist, the fundamental principles are the same. The, the, the second thing is the processes that we have been able to nurture here or, or take in. I mean, morning people referred to the fact that from a quick and dirty startup, how do you become a world-class large organization? You have to have great processes as number of people get in because now you are no more one-on-one. -on -one. You can't communicate. You, you need to communicate across the organization how things happen, what are to do and what are the don'ts and how do you go about doing things at the field level where rubber meets the road? The last person in Agastya will have to carry it out to the teacher or the student, the spirit of you know uh, uh, what our mission is all about. And that requires a lot of processes, which is something that we have done with, with you know, Desh uh, for the past five years. Uh, we've been, he's been talking about everywhere, corporate processes, but with social and nonprofit mission. So that is a very, very important thing that you learn in a place like Sandbox, the third thing, and one of the most important things, as you grow, money will come. People talked about it, uh, Mr. Deep Do Joshi in the morning talked about it, and he also talked about the fact that investing and growing leaders ahead of its time, making sure that you have the bandwidth at the higher level and the middle level before you can scale, is something that we got from Sandbox, not just in spirit, but the Deshpande Foundation is the only one which funded for middle management people in Agastya. Saying that, okay, we, don't we won't fund a program this time. We will fund for people, for 
growing your leadership so that you can go into the next level in the next three to five years. And that is, I think, very, very fundamental for scaling and taking on new sandboxes like in Nizamabad and elsewhere, I'm sure, which is what's going to happen thanks to Sanjay as well. So these are the things that I wanted to mention. Great. Thank, thanks, Tiaji. Uh, uh, and, and speaking of leaders, let me turn to one of our youngest leaders over here. Uh, you know, Fani, you have also scaled quite dramatically. If I look at your track record with Red Bus, uh, what, I mean, you have learned obviously some lessons in growing an organization. Uh, do you see any similarities with what you have done there and some of what you're seeing or hearing so far? Has some of that resonated in terms of what you see in the re re sandbox? Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, one of the similarities that I can see between Red Bus and uh, uh, Nizamabad Sandbox is uh, that it's a push button, right? Things happen. The, the biggest thing, I think, is to just show up, right? Uh, when we started the company, we just showed up and without any experience uh, into setting up a company, et cetera, and all that, and we got mentors from uh, Thai and Bangalore, and they helped us scale up. And today, I can't believe in retrospect. It's phenomenal. I mean, we could never imagine that uh, Nizamabad could uh, win a Limca Book of Records for anything, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, just this afternoon, Raju and I were talking to uh, the students. Uh, 30 of them are here today. And uh, the confidence, like they said, they came four days back. And uh, one of the girls who stood up and uh, she was talking, and she said, four days back when she came here, she was uh, completely intimidated with uh, all the things that are happening here. Uh, first day, she didn't speak to anybody. Second day, she didn't speak to anybody. Uh, yesterday, she was in the audience. She wanted to ask a question, but then the session ended, and, <laughs> right? So, she, today, she stood up, spoke, and she told uh, this whole story. She said, yesterday, I wanted to ask a question. I couldn't ask, and today, I'm standing up and asking the question. In four days, right, I mean, uh, those students can change. It's a phenomenal thing, I mean, uh, did we do anything? I mean, personally, I didn't do anything, uh, right? Uh, things are just happening. The, the, the biggest thing uh, probably I did is just follow Raju. Raju was in our board. He said, let's set up a sandbox there. I didn't know anything about it, but uh, I knew Raju was a good, uh, good person at heart. And uh, otherwise, I said, I'll blindly follow him. And today I see all this. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Thank, thanks for, that, that, for the, that perspective. I think, you know, that's some of the excitement in the sandboxes getting to see the youth and see the transformation that happens in the youth over there. So uh, let me turn to Sanjay, because Sanjay, you have kind of taken a wider view, right? You've been coming to our uh, dialogue for quite a, quite a time, and I think you have been talking to a lot more people. So what is it that you see, and what are you hearing from other people? You know, you have spoken beyond getting uh, you know, Raju Reddy and others involved over here on the dais. Sure. You know, you've spoken to others. So what do you see? What's their perspective? Thank you. Thank you, Raj. It's glad to be uh, back here in Hubli. It's almost become a, like an annual pilgrimage to come here every January. This, I first came here in uh, January of 2010, and since then I've been back every year. And when I first came here in 2010, uh, like most of you, I had a chance to visit, go for the field visits, had a chance to visit the Akshay Patra kitchen. And uh, Panditji, Yagneshwara Dasaji gave me a personal tour along with the other attendees. And what really struck me was the sheer scale of what uh, was happening. And right now, they feed about 250,000 kids. That's the capacity of the Hubli kitchen, one of the largest kitchens in, if not the world in Asia. And to do the entire uh, yeah, cooking in four hours flat and uh, to uh, yeah, do it in 100 kilometer radius, uh, the scale, that really kind of was a mind-blowing experience for me. Then I had a chance to meet with Mr. Ramji Raghavan and Tiagu, who were doing similar things in Agastya. And uh, so the thing that struck me was, yeah, here is Desh. I had known Desh and Jayashri for the past 15 years. We, uh, all of us are alumni of the same engineering college, IIT Madras. And I knew of the wonderful work that he was doing in the field of commercial entrepreneurship back in the US and the stuff that he was doing at MIT. But to have a first-hand exposure to the stuff that he was doing in the handbox was great. And at about the same time, I had uh, read in a business magazine somewhere that India is ranked number two in the number of new dollar millionaires being minted each year. A lot of people may, were making a lot of money. And uh, uh, so the thought was that, yeah, so the Deshpande Foundation is doing it in this Hubli and four surrounding districts in Northwest Karnataka, uh, Belgaum, Dharwad, uh, Haveri, Gadak. And India has 625 districts. 
So we need at least 100 bases to be able to kind of replicate the kind of good work that's happening here uh, for the entire country to re benefit from this. That was the thought that I had, and it's been a kind of, uh, yeah, since then I've been persuading both Desh and Jayashri to, Desh, we need to be more proactive in getting the word out. Uh, Desh being the humble man that he is, he doesn't kind of blow his own trumpet. So it's fallen to somebody like me to kind of spread the good word that he's doing. And uh, whenever I go to a, yeah, a, a new uh, potential hub champion, say somebody like Raju Reddy or somebody like uh, Dilip Modi, his representative Abhinav Mathur is in the audience. So my pitch to them is, so you, uh, there are two essential ingredients to be a hub champion. You need to have the financial wherewithal to support the work that's happening in, this, in your respective locations, and you need to have the social commitment. So uh, over the years, people have been doing lots of good work. They've started a hospital, they've started a school, uh, they've donated to the local temples, and all that is fine and dandy. More of that should happen for more betterment. But my pitch to these hub champions is that, look at the sandbox, look at somebody like uh, yeah, Desh and Jayashree, look at what they've done in the field of business entrepreneurship, commercial entrepreneurship in the US, and what they've done in India on the ground in the Hubli region. And if you were to start with the principles of the sandbox and then customize to your heart's content to suit your respective regions, to suit your underlying uh, demographics of the population of your region, you'll get a much bigger bang for your development rupee than if you do it on your own. That's been my pitch. Thanks. Sanjay, thank, thanks a lot for all your support and for evangelizing the word. So as we think about scaling and replicating these things, you know, Raju, you're, you're going to be the first uh, 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 implementation happening happening in the Kakatiya sandbox. I just, uh, you know, each one I'm assuming, you know, one of the things we talk about a lot is contextual innovation. Uh, so, which means each one is going to have to be slightly different depending on where you are, the region you are in, and so on. Uh, so, let me ask off the panel, you know, from, uh, you know, uh, Sridhar and uh, Tiago, based on your experience, you know, what are some of the caveats as you go from region to region? Uh, you know, what do you have to keep in mind when you, you replicate your operations? Yeah, it might not be the sandbox. And then, you know, when from Fani and, uh, you know, Ra Raju's perspective, as you're thinking about Kakatiya, uh, what you have seen over here, what you're thinking over there, what are some regional differences? How would you might have to change it, tweak it, and so on? So, you know, maybe, uh, you know, Sridhar and then Tiago, if you can talk about from your practical experience. Uh, so we used to send Khichdi every day to children in Bangalore, five government schools. So first 10 days they lapped it up and a lot of good consumption was there and we were very happy the children are coming to school to eat Khichdi and also to study. After 10 days we saw that the consumption nose dived. The consumption started coming down. So we were all wondering. When we went and researched, we found out the children in Bangalore don't eat Khichdi every day. They don't like Khichdi. Those children were eating khichdi because they were hungry. Children in Bangalore like sambar and rice. That gave an insight to us that we should structure Akshaya Patra with a local palatal preference. So that was one learning which we had. Okay. So all the Akshaya Patra kitchens, if you see in Orissa, we have an Orissan meal. In Gujarat, we have a Gujarati meal. We give sukhdi as dessert in Gujarat. We give dal dhokli. In Orissa, we give an Orissan meal. In uh, Karnataka, we give a Kanadiga meal. So we make sure that every day the menu changes and once in a week we give dessert to children and generally don't tell them which part of the week we are giving dessert because the day we give dessert, the attendance goes up. <laughs> okay. So this is one uh, learning which we had. Second one was before we open up operation in any area, from a su see sustainability is a big challenge in Akshay Patra if you have to scale up in a big manner. So we realize that unless we get committed donors, and the government support, proper land, proper government support, in, in one sense, blessings of government and donors, we should not start operations in any place. Because we have had cases where we, have the, we had the kitchens ready for feeding 50,000 children. For one year, we, didn't, we were not allowed to start the operation because the local MLA was opposing. The kitchen was ready, but we were not able to start. So another learning which we had was that you need to have the government support at the local level and also donors who uh, who who will stand by you long term. That was the second learning which we had. Third was we realized that we are we see we are a centralized kitchen model. So our uh, in one sense our job ends with delivering the meal to the school, and the school takes the responsibility of uh, making sure that every child is getting fed properly. 
but we realize that unless we cover the last mile properly our mission is not accomplished so we are now working with other uh, voluntary organizations to help us in social audits to work with uh, teachers with principals to ensure that the child has a good healthy meal experience these are some three or four Great. learnings which we had yeah. how about you tiago is there anything to replicate in a new sandbox like uh, nizamabad we definitely start with an advantage because what you have learned here and elsewhere come into play to that extent our targets to do things become ambitious if we took an year to do a nice sized science fair we would like it to do it in the first 90 days here if it's possible if we took a year to roll out a young instructor leader program we would like to see that it is done or it blooms much faster in in that place uh, so that to that extent the the targets are more ambitious the processes having been set one of the things that is reasonably local and unpredictable is government support and having the local support definitely that is something that we focus and concentrate on when we go to a new place uh, vernacular challenges in our case it's not so much because we have a campus in kuppam and therefore nizamabad uh, was not very different but it, i i had a similar experience elsewhere in gujarat so we had to redo the entire thing in local language that that is a big challenge for you to overcome and somebody will push you to do it in uh, you know one month and two months and that's exactly what happened to us when lnt wanted us to do something in karel uh, but we had to say that listen we would like to do it well and correct and therefore let's take that time and once we do it well then the replication or you know spreading it further in gujarat is much easier so that is something that we had to kind of say and uh, and and make it happen uh, recruiting locally and nurturing leaders locally becomes uh, one of the most important things to make it a long term success uh, if you do too much transplantation it doesn't work uh, in the long run you might have somebody being interested in going and doing something for the sake of you know meeting a challenge and so on but ultimately it's important that we get someone who's local who understands the language and so on and so forth we have balram with us here who was uh, you know well uh, experienced in in andhra to do things and he now Uh, kind of takes care of the nizamabad uh, sandbags and so on so it's it's a series of things that we have learned and implemented and are improving every day these are some fundamental things uh, you know raju is any takeaways from this that you all are already applying in terms of how you are approaching kakatiya or fani anything that you had to add uh, you know have you all got that local commitment uh, in terms of the government support are there other kind of bugaboos that you haven't that you haven't thought about the way i envision this is if there are 20 such uh, you know partly the afi objective clearly 20 such sandboxes around the country each over a period of time really impacting a 1 crore population on average i mean that is a huge huge transformation that's 15% of india's population 25% of rural india considering many of these are actually in rural india so to me what better opportunity can i find for the rest of my life if i can be a part of that in whatever little way so there I, i want to ask you you know one of the things we keep talking about is you know the culture and encouraging a culture of risk taking uh, what are your thoughts in terms of you know how as we start replicating this thing how do we make sure that we keep the culture that we have and that they still have a brand of a culture of their own when they come up with a sandbox the analogy of the sandbox is to constantly do that experimentation with new things i mean the successful things get duplicated <clears throat> but innovation is all about experimentation and and experimentation means failure and so the only secret of of supporting that innovation is to make sure that you craft your designs and experiments so that when they fail you fail small you know it's not you don't fail fatally so that you gone right so <clears throat> number one i think it's it's getting the ego under control so that when you fail uh you can just admit and uh and and not feel totally broken about it and and secondly creating that excitement you know so so when you when you have so many people doing this thing it just builds that culture of where people are trying all kinds of things and are some are successful some are not successful but it's just a it's just a game it, it's a game you know i 
think somehow creating that excitement for just having that sense of experimentation and 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 doing new things, thinking about new things, supporting each other. Uh, I think it's just a lot of fun.